So uh, in actually Hadassah is a hospital. Uh, we have two hospitals in Jerusalem, one in the south uh, uh, southwest and one in the northeast of Jerusalem. Um, the larger one is the one that is on the southwest side of the city, uh, the main hospital. Um, what we're looking in is we're looking at uh, a hospital that uh, the world of medicine is basically changing. And uh, it's happening all over the world. And we're talking to our friends in the United States and in Europe and Israel following Corona, things have changed significantly. So uh, what we see is that hospitals, which are tertiary care hospitals are becoming more and more complicated and more and more uh, with complex technologies. And you see it in the, um, in the ICUs, in complex cases, multi-organ complex procedures and stuff like that. What we see also with Adasa is our move to uh, day hospital centers, which are medium-sized uh, clinics that we put in the community. And then we have also uh, the day clinics, the community clinics, or actually home, uh, even home departments, which we'll discuss in a moment. So these are the home departments and obviously preventive medicine, which come also into effect. All this depends also on the on how your uh, hospital care is arranged in or how your medical services are arranged. In Israel, I should say that everything I described here, except for the preventive part, is done by the hospital. The prevention, most of it is done by the community services, by our health management organizations who are very, very strong. But also we participate in some of the preventive procedures. So if we're looking at uh, Hadassah, what you will see is you will see a move of the hospital from the tertiary care to intermediate complex uh, uh, areas, which is the clinics in the surroundings of Jerusalem and the home clinics. And then we have also collaborative partnerships. And, and I'm sorry, this part it is in Hebrew, but we have collaborative partnerships both in Israel with clinics outside of the Jerusalem area. And we have also in collaborative clinics outside of Israel abroad. We are now working with a group in Mexico, opening a hospital over there. So uh, we are a non-for-profit organization, which was uh, founded by Henrietta Zold men about 110 years ago. And she said, dare to dream, and when you dream, dream big, and that's what we're trying to do over the past years. And when I'm looking at planning, I have a quote from Eisenhower, which I really, really like. And this is, in preparing for battle, I have always found that plans are useless, but planning in, is indispensable. And I should say that in my organization for the past 10 years, one of the weaknesses that I, had when I identified was that we did not plan. And for this reason, when I became director general, I took upon myself to really put a strategic plan for the hospital. So what is our mission statement? Uh, our mission statement is to maintain the standards of care and practices in Israel that we have established many years ago. We were the first healthcare system in Israel. But I think what we're really meaning is our commitment to excellence in advanced healthcare, in research and in teaching. And I can proudly say that we're meeting these goals today and I'll give some examples as we go around. One of the things that we're doing is we're serving a very, very, very complex population, about 1.3 million people, but with extremely different uh, uh, concepts when it comes to uh, the family, into religion from very, very secular people to very, very religious, either Christians, Muslims, or, or Jews. And we're serving all of them. And I'm very proud that all of them feel at home at Adasa. As I said, we have two clinics in the Jerusalem area and we have a clinic in the Tel Aviv area. And just to give you a little bit of the numbers of last year, we have about 1,300 beds in both hospitals in Jerusalem. We have 45 operating rooms. We have four NG suits, we have five catheterization laboratories, we have five MRIs, we have two PET CTs and we have two cyclotrons. We are producing about 60% of the isotopes for the state of Israel and we have four linear accelerators. We're serving about a million patients a year and we're, uh, we have about 170 um, emergency room visits 
in 110,000 hospitalization admissions during the year. And uh, I'm sh these are the numbers, 23,000 MRI examinations. So pretty large organization, just to give you a touch, our uh, turnaround in business is about $1 billion a year. So if I'm looking at how, what the hospital is, uh, how do you look at the hospital? I think you look at clinic, the way we see it is clinical excellence, excellence in research, excellence in teaching, and also we're trying to do the best we can is managerial excellence. And I would say that I would like to see people coming to work and they're, they are pleased to come to work. Now, what we decided is we decided to go on a strategic plan for 2030, and we did a few stages. So first of all, we started looking at strategically thinking, and I decided to look at two strategic plans. One is a short-term one for two to three years, development plan for the hospital, but then to look at 10-year development plan. And as we go along, we'll, you'll try to see why I did that, because this is very, very important. Now, this process is not dedicated for the two to three year plan. This is dedicated for the 10 year plan. And the reason is that there are an enormous amount of new technologies that are on the verge of being accepted in medicine. And what you need is you need to prepare for the workforce and you need to prepare for the infrastructure to accept these, uh, these, uh, these services and really to be at the forefront of medicine. So we performed strategic committees in different issues in a moment you'll see, and we have a very specific Gantt of action, which culminates in January when they're going to present to me the final results. We had a few sessions where we discussed the results, but the final results will be presented at the mid-January. We looked basically on all areas of the hospital. So we have here a list which compromises both the laboratories, all the departments, and also all the services that we looked to look at because we think technology is coming to come in and change it very significantly. I'll just give one small example, pathology. Pathology is a key issue when you deal today with cancer, when you deal today with immunodeficiency um, diseases. And what we decided is to focus on pathology when it comes on the genetics of pathology and of cancers and immunomodulatory diseases. So we've put a lot of emphasis in how we prepare ourselves for performing all these genetic studies in order to be able to provide our patients the best treatment when it comes to personalized medications. So what we did is we started with saying what are the key issues that we think we need to address in our strategic plan. And obviously the first thing is the quality of care, but also the technological place we have in the services, but then also on personalized medicine, but also on PROMS. PROMS is what is the results of the procedure of the treatment you've given the patient and how much does it benefit of it really? Then unique services, centers of excellence, multidisciplinary teams, which for my opinion are the most important things we need to in integrate into all our services. And obviously because of the Corona, digital medicine, telemedicine, and also the ability to communicate with telemedicine into the community. And then obviously also because we are a university hospital, we own 50% of the university, also academic medicine, and the most important part, the most important part for us in Jerusalem and in Israel is nurturing the human resources. When it comes nurturing young physicians, the physicians that go abroad that they come back to Hadassah, nurture the medical students, nurture uh, nursing and prepare nursing for the challenges of the future. So it's not only medicals, but it's also physicians, nurses, and also other disciplines in the hospital that we find are extremely important, for example, computer engineers. Now, the general trends we see today in Israel is an increase in life expectancy. Israel is one of the leading in the world in life expectancy, with Jerusalem has the highest growth rate in the population because of the number of ultra-Orthodox uh, uh, families, we see a very high rate of birth. And also because of that, also a relatively high rate of aging. Uh, 
we see that personalized medications are becoming extremely important in biological treatments like CAR T are becoming, will become center stage and we need to prepare ourselves for that. And also alternative medicine, which is becoming very popular among patients. And as I said at the beginning, also preventive medicine. We discussed the, the, the connection to the faculty of medicine, as I explained before, innovative technologies. And when we talk about technologies, uh, uh, technologies, I would say the 3D printing for my is one example, which I think we need to look into that because it will become part in five to 10 years, it will be part of the regular treatment of patients, disease-based centers of excellence, advanced diagnostic and personal medications, and the human resources we discussed before. Now we discussed that. So what are the issues that we really uh, look at? As I said, we have three pods that at Adassa we're focusing, the clinical medicine, the research, and the teaching. And if we look at the hospital, then the issues we have to address is the telemedicine, the home care, and the geographic dis dispersion, which is we're going to send extensions from the hospital, not only to the Jerusalem area, but also outside of Jerusalem to the south. Uh, one of the cities we're looking for is a city called near, um, near the border with Gaza, which is Netivot. When we look at new technologies, then in big numbers, what you need to look at is at non-invasive technologies, which are becoming more and more standard of care. Then advanced monitoring. And when I'm saying advanced monitoring is also having patients at home connected to ongoing continuous monitoring. Robotics are extremely important. And I can tell you that in our hospital today, we have at least already today, 10 to 15 robots that are being used on a day-to-day -day care for surgeries and procedures. And I would say also that I'm very proud that we've become one of the center of excellence for uh, the development of robots for one of the large international companies. Real-time imaging is also extremely important. And when I'm saying real-time imaging is also the fact that we are providing our patients with direct access to their imaging. So if a patient can see on, my, uh, on his cell phone, he can actually see his CT, his MRI, not only the, the response, but also the actual pictures can be seen by the patient. In radiotherapy, proton therapy, and 3D printing, I mentioned before, uh, printing actually uh, parts of the body that will be printed instead of being transplanted, will be printed out of stem cells from patients. It looks like scientific, uh, like I'm sewing sci-fi. It's not sci-fi. It's very close to us within most probably in some areas within 10 years will, be, will happen. The other issues that we're putting a lot of emphasis is big data and AI. And I cannot emphasize the importance for any hospital today in the world to look at big data and AI and understand. And the reason is also because AI will become a way of us to fight one of the big problems we will have in Israel, which is a lack of physicians. So I'll give you an example. If I have a lack now of radiologists, what I'm putting now, and I'm putting a lot of emphasis on introducing AI systems for our radiology department, because I want pathological tests to be brought up to the pile as quickly as possible. So first of all, my physicians look at something that is suspected of being pathological before they address just the routine overworked that they have. So big data and AI will come into process. They won't replace the physician, but they will help us in decision-making they will help us in prioritizing our decision-making. So this is very, very important. Uh, we mentioned before already the issues of centers of excellence, multidisciplinary teams, preventive and unique services. Um, I'm putting an emphasis also on the issues of manpower. And when I'm talking about manpower, it's training medical support teams, which is very, very important unique training programs for specific areas that you need to develop, recruiting academic personnel, which for us is extremely important. Simulation centers are extremely important. And I'm in my past before becoming a director of a hospital, I was head of the Department of Anesthesia. I truly believe that in a few years, 
in the West, Western countries, you won't be able to perform the procedure before you did a simulation on the procedure on a simulator. So the integration of simulation centers into our day-to-day -day work is becoming extremely important. And as I mentioned before, anything that is computational medicine, AI, will become extremely important. And we're putting a lot of emphasis in our faculty of medicine to prepare our physicians for the future to have also capabilities in computational medicine. Uh, I think we discussed that, but just examples of personalized medication. So we know the biological treatments, but also CAR T and stem cell treatments are very important. And I'm very proud because we just now sold to an American company uh, a new CAR T treatment for multiple myeloma. So we're truly involved in that. And we think that CAR T is with amazing results in phase one and phase two. And we believe that CAR T is really the future in treating some of the cancers. I must say that for us, for Hadassah, also looking at financial strength is extremely important. And I'm not hiding it. When I'm talking to my personnel, I'm always putting also the financial strengths and financial decision-making when taking decisions as part of the medical decision-making. And this is because we need to increase the income of the hospital in order to develop the hospital, increase the efficiency, uh, if we want to recruit international customers, we need to show that we're also efficient and that we're financially sound. Also, our donors are looking at our financial stability. Purchasing processes are extremely important. And also our agreements with the health management organizations, which are the organizations that in Israel are covering the healthcare for the patients. If they see that we're financially stable and that we are financially re respecting their money, then obviously they will be much more happy to refer their patients to us. And we're trying by this to gain their confidence. So I'm not hiding it that financial strength is part of the stability of a hospital and you need to look into that. Um, when you look at, in, uh, at human resources, then we discussed it before, but you need to think of recruiting solutions Preserving employees is extremely important, especially in Israel where we have more and more lack of physicians and there's a competition between centers. Investment in training, as I mentioned before. Uh, also the preparedness to shorten the on-duty calls, which in Israel has become a major issue. Duty calls in Israel are going to be shortened from 24 hours to 17 hours. And this is part of the competition. And obviously developing human physicians, nurses as human capital, obviously it's obvious. So I would say one thing, and this is the most important one, is that I came to an understanding that the hospital has three parts that make it work today. When I started 40 years ago, it was just the human, you had just a physician going with the stethoscope. Today it's impossible to maintain a modern hospital. But if I have to choose the infrastructure to the software to the people, I would say that the investment in your human resources is the most important to maintain the quality of the hospital. It's not that you don't need to invest also in the infrastructure and the equipment and the software, but you need especially to put emphasis on the people. So I hope that I was not even the 20 minutes, 25 minutes, because I really wanted to leave the door open for discussion. And let's say that this was an introduction to the open discussion now that we could have for the coming 20 minutes. Mi pregunta tiene relación con el proceso de Adasa, el exitoso proceso de Adasa para adaptarse a los cambios y a los tiempos. ¿Cómo lo lograron? ¿Cómo es posible que a la fecha sigan pudiendo estar a la vanguardia? So first of all, we're not ahead in everything. It's impossible today. Uh, medicine has become very, very, very complicated. And for this reason, what we're trying to do is we're trying to focus on areas that we decide are critical for us. It's not that we're ahead of everything. Uh, we're a large tertiary care center and in some areas, we are leaders in the, even in the world. Um, when it comes to stem cell therapy, I would say even CAR-T's therapy, we're trying to implement all the advanced technologies in cancer. 
but there are other areas where we're not definitely not the leaders, not in Israel and not abroad. It's impossible. And I think one of the things that the hospital needs to do, and that's the strategy I took, is that for Jerusalem, we should serve as a tertiary care hospital and a secondary care hospital in Mount Scopus and provide the routine services that the population needs, but then decide on specific areas that we want to be dominant. And what we decided to do dominant is to be dominant when it comes to surgical procedures in robotics, and when it comes to, uh, to other treatments to be specifically focused on cancer. And I would say that I'm putting a lot of emphasis in anything that is related to cancer. In a way, to make Hadassah the leading center, cancer center in Israel, when it comes to medical treatment and others. So um, that's the focus. It's really impossible to be today to leaders in everything. And someone who tells you that they lead in everything, I'm sorry to say, medicine is so complicated, it's impossible to have it. It can't occur. Only maybe, the only ones that can really do it is maybe Mayo Clinic or Harvard. They can, they can afford being leaders in everything. It's very difficult because it's simply extremely, extremely expensive. 